I'm Beth. And I'm Lucy. And, and we're, we're XX, XX Science. Science. So what are we talking about today? Well, what's university life like for us as students, but also as science students? So I guess first we should probably talk about how much work we should be doing. Okay, so we are told by our tutors and by the, the science departments that we work in that we should be doing one on, one off. Is yeah. that the same for yeah, you? Yeah, pretty much. So about for every hour you spend in uni, you should also be spending an hour on the same subject out of uni, like in your own time. So for me in first and second year especially, that was uh, basically the equivalent to a full-time job because we had more than 20 hours uh, scheduled time in uni a week. So 20 hours in uni and then 20 hours out, it's, it's, it's quite intense. It's a lot of work and that does change for which subject you're in. So um, say my sister did an English Lit degree and in her first and second year she might not have that many contact hours but then again, you have to read novels when you're doing English literature. And S write more essays and have, they have a lot more coursework, um, so, generally. Yeah, generally. So it really does depend on your subject. But did we do that amount of work out of uni? <laughs> I'd say that on a weekly basis, you should probably aim to do an hour out for every hour you've done in. In reality, you probably end up doing every an hour out for every hour you've done in, but in the two weeks before exams. Yeah. Which is not the Cram least. In. It's not the least stressful way to operate. So, yeah, if you're if you're still at the beginning, I definitely recommend trying to stick to that kind of plan. It's it's a good plan, but then again, I sometimes have that thing of going, but I could enjoy today and not do the work, and then do all the work later. Um, you hate yourself. You always hate past you for doing that. <laughs> but I guess it's not all doom and gloom at no, university, no. so there's lots of other things you can get involved with. The easiest way to do that is probably through uni societies, um, so these vary from university to university. But here we've got um, a charity called Science Brainwaves. That we're both part of. That we're both part of, and they run kind of outreach work. Um, so if you if you want to do science outreach while you're at uni. Which is a really good thing for it as well if you're thinking of doing like a PGCE or you're interested in teaching or if like me, and I don't want to teach, but I'd quite like to do something like a curatorship in a museum, you get loads of experience and it's really fun. Or if you don't do a science degree, but you still want to get involved in science at uni, getting involved in a science society is a really good way to sort of, you know, keep, what is it, keep your hand in? Is that yeah, the case? Yeah. Yeah, you know, so sort of stay involved with it even though you might be doing an arts degree. Um, so what other science societies do we have here? So we've got we've got all the outreach for each of the departments, but then we've got um, PH7, so that's yeah. the blog that is run by students and you can write for if you just go in and get a title. There's a science column in the uni newspaper as well. Yes, which is great. Um, and then there's Eureka, so we've got a science uh, radio show which is run by Brainwaves and PH7 here um, but yeah again a lot of unis if they've got a radio station but not a science radio show that's the kind of thing you can ask if you want to set up um, then we've got uh, what else just yeah well we've got my club oh yes now, <laughs> a little warning about Lucy's club <laughs> that sounds horrible <laughs> if you don't like creepy crawlies I would skip the next couple minutes. So. It's fine, it's fine. I just run a little club for people who are interested in entomology, so that's... Bug Bugs club. It's, it's book club. Um, <laughs> or book club, as my parents thought I was running for a long time. Not a book club. Not a book club. A so club. Uh, we're going to introduce some of our friends now from my book club. Our special guest today. Yeah, so... Yeah, what are their names? Their names are Cornelius and Mildred. And here they are. So, so this is a train millipede and uh, we have another one here as well this is his friend um, that's asleep at the minute um, so this one <laughs> is a called Cornelius and this one is called Mildred and but you don't actually know the genders we don't actually know what sex they are no but I just thought they were fun names um, so these guys are part of the collection that we have for the bug club that I've set up and we have them basically for demonstrations because as you can see they're um, they're pretty interesting creatures and kids love them. So what I usually use them for is um, I do demonstrations with them on like the Bee and Scientist days, on the Discovery nights, on the open days mm. and um, they're just really really super fun. The only problem is kids do have a habit of going can I please hold it and you have to go 
Um, maybe not, because these guys, I'll just zoom in a teeny tiny bit, scare factor five, and um, as you can possibly see, I am shaking. Um, they have got little hooks on the ends of their feet, and that is how they like drag themselves along and stuff. But um, that means that if you try and pull them off, sometimes they can hook onto your skin. So sometimes kids wanna wanna have a go of holding them, and you just go, mm, maybe not. It's cute, isn't he? Don't you think? He's cute. I think he's cute. I think he's cute. So where are these guys um, from? Originally, they are from Southeast Asia, that kind of area. So the Forests, possibly Borneo, Malaysia, that kind of area. Jungle. Jungle. So you're not going to find these in your back garden, I'm afraid. Um, but yeah, they're called train millipedes. You can tell that they're millipedes as opposed to centipedes, which you can get giant centipedes that are this size, um, because they're very cylindrical. As you can see, they're very rounded, their bodies, and they have two legs per segment as opposed to one leg for um, centipedes. But also, these guys are detritivores, so they have, um, they eat leaves, dead leaves basically. Whereas, although this guy is currently nibbling on my finger, I am not a carrot. Thank you. Um, whereas centipedes will bite um, animals and they are carnivores. Look at him. I think he's adorable. Maybe that's just me. Thank you, Cornelius. Thank you, Mildred. Although Mildred is not being cooperative today. Sleepy Mildred. <laughs> now back to um, to the studio. Back to the studio. <laughs> so I do quite a lot of science in my degree. I do quite a lot of outreach as well. But sometimes you don't want to do science. You want to get away from it sometimes. So there are lots of other different kinds of societies you can get involved in. Everything, sports clubs, anime, fantasy, from tea or yeah, wine tea, tasting? Tea and wine tasting. Um, I've learnt sign language this year with a society. Oh, phew, that's yeah. cool. And um, I've been really involved in like musical theatre. So there's there's all sorts of ways that you can get involved to take your brain off science yeah. once in a while. And there's loads of ways that you can uh, learn new skills. So my friends learned bur uh, burlesque this year and I've been working in a representative committee and that like gives you some really, really good skills for like outside work and stuff. So loads of different types of things you can get so, involved in. So you can have fun while actually, you know, that all important making your CV look nice and shiny for employers. <laughs> and the degree. That oh we yeah, are. the degree. We, also, we sometimes forget we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> so another way that a lot of people find that you need to help them forget their degree is of course, partying, going out, having fun. Which and is... what are you talking about? No, no one does that, not at all. Um, it's all my parents think I do. So I know that quite a lot of people think that uni is going to be, I know quite a lot of parents actually are quite worried about uni being a place that's full of peer pressure, but it can be, but if you don't want to do something, you really don't have to. So I've managed to get through all three years of university without drinking. Whereas Lucy, you you have water occasionally. Yeah, well, no, I'm not, not drinking anything, but drinking alcohol. You intake moisture from it, like the, that toad. Just osmosis. Um, yes. Uh, whereas I, um, <laughs> sounds awful. I drink for everyone. No, I I've worked in bars for the entire time I've been at university. I was uh, trained in cocktail, craft beer, and bourbon, um, alcohol, and gin. Um, <laughs> and I, uh, when I go out, I'm, I'm often out with bartenders and I drink. Um, but I'm also friends with a lot of people who don't. I'm friends with you, yeah. kind of. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it's fine either way. Yeah, it's fine, like, whatever you want to do. But there are opportunities to go out and socialise um, in, like, you know, there's, there's bar crawls. Every, every society has a bar crawl. But then there's loads of, you know, they go ice skating or they'll go to ice cream for, um, you know, gelato. Yeah, mm -hmm. going out for ice cream is, is great. It's always great. And then there's the things like walks in the peaks that uh, Natural History Society do, which are an amazing way to, like, meet people and do stuff if you don't drink. So another thing that is quite important about uni is... Varsity. Oh yes. <laughs> so it can feel like if you've got two universities in the same city that there's a bit of a rivalry between the two of them, um, especially as there used to be a history of, um, what are they called? Poly... What? Polytechnic. Polytechnic unis, yeah. Um, and sometimes that creates a little bit of a rivalry because they've all now been converted to the same kind of thing. 
but in reality, day-to-day -day life, nobody cares. No one cares, really. Well, I really, really don't. And there's this kind of facade of like, oh, you're from the different uni, I've got to like square up to you. You don't. No. Um, the only time it gets a little bit hectic <laughs> is during the final sporting events which can get interested. They, I, they can get a little bit heated. Yeah. I'm but, very glad that my sport is not done by our university because I reckon I would have got very, very into that. Yeah, <laughs> so, you know, it's, but even then, it is all just a bit of fun. At the end of the day, we're all still friends, really. Yeah. yeah. So hopefully this video today has managed to give you just a little bit of background on what uni's like, um, especially for us. Yeah. Uh, and. Yeah, so I guess if you've got any any questions or worries, if you're thinking about, you know, thinking about going to uni in the next couple of years, feel free to tweet us in. We might not be able to answer all your questions. We might have somebody who does um, yeah. does the subject that you're planning on taking. If you've just firmed your offer for university, or if you're just thinking about it, and um, we might be able to answer some of your queries and some of your worries possibly about moving away and starting everything at uni. Yeah. So feel free to drop us a tweet or Facebook us. Um, so we're on Twitter at xx underscore science. xx underscore sky science? Science. Science. I'm a science student. Um, <laughs> and xx science search on Facebook. So I've been Beth. And I've been Lucy. And, and we've, we've been, been xx, XX science. science.